Okay, this is a continuation of section 2.5 for Mac 1105 where we are discussing transformations of functions. And we have just come upon a problem where we are going to take the two examples that we've done thus far and combine them into one problem. So in this problem we'll be doing a horizontal shift as well as a vertical shift in order to get our transformed graph. So here we have the parent graph. Here we have the graph that we are trying to perform the transformations for. And notice that one number is with the x inside the grouping symbols. That's going to be our horizontal shift. So we will be acting upon the x's, not with a negative 3, but as emphasized in the last example, horizontal shifts are the ones where you switch the sign. So we're going to be using a positive 3 on our x's, whereas this number is not inside um, the grouping symbols. It is out here by itself. That's known as a vertical shift. For vertical shifts, we do not switch the sign, so we use it as is. That means we're going to be using a positive 5, and we're going to be using 5 on our y coordinates. So uh, another way that this can be suggested, I just wanted to make you aware that sometimes when they want to direct you as to what is to be done in order to, to create the transformed graph, they could give you f of x, and then they can give you in this. So here, this would be the same thing as saying, take x's and add 3. This has to be a horizontal shift since that negative 3 is with the x in the grouping symbols. And so really, you would be adding 3 on all your x-coordinate number that is not inside the grouping symbols would be the vertical shift. So it's a different kind of notation that they can use to actually help you create the same graph that we're going to create. So they can say it as two separate functions, or they can just talk about the original parent graph and instruct you what to do on your x's as well as your y's. Either way, you have to understand that when the number is inside the grouping symbols, that is a horizontal shift, must switch to signs, must use it on the x's. When it's not inside the grouping symbols, regardless of which kind of notation they use, that's a vertical shift, don't switch the sign, and use it on the y's. Okay, so let's start by recognizing three points on the parent graph. Now, as you get further into this section, you'll be picking the x values yourself. You always have the option of creating your own graph and picking the x values. It's wise to um, keep them small. And depending on what kind of graph you are graphing, you're sometimes going to want to you know, pick x values that will create like mirror images. you got to be careful uh, depending on what kind of graph you're creating, the function that you're using. Be careful about domain and not choosing x values that don't even belong to the domain. So that's why we talk about domain quite a bit before we even get to this section so that when you are in a situation where you're picking your own x values, you're not using x values that make the whole function undefined and stop the problem right in its tracks. So again, I have kind of led you into this. I have picked some x values for you. When you're using this function right here, the domain is all real numbers, so you could actually pick whatever you want. And I have chosen, you know, some pretty small numbers. I've picked negative 2 as an x value and its positive counterpart so that those would create two mirror images and make a nice uh, symmetric um, parabola shape. And I've also picked 0 a number in between those two x. Uh, the y partners that go with them where all these question marks are, that's just something for you to carry out so that you can continue practicing what we've done in another section, plugging an x value into a function. So the function is um, x squared, and we're going to be, we're looking for three points on the paragraph. We're just going to be plugging in negative 2, then 0, then 2. So let's plug in the negative 2. When you square that, you're going to get a 4. When you plug in um, 0, and you can even put right here what you're plugging in. You can announce what you're plugging in. And when you're plugging in a 0, this is called, you know, as it was in the previous sections, evaluating a function. When you square a 0, you're just going to get 0. 
And all of these can be written as points. The number that you're plugging in is the x value while the answer is the y value. So I just found the partner for negative 2. I also found the partner for 0. just turned out to be 0. It's always super easy to plug into the parent graph, and then you can use those answers and what you've learned about transformations to get the more complicated points. Um, understand that it, whether you plug in a negative 2 or whether you plug in a positive 2, that doesn't matter, and some, you'll start taking shortcuts with that, understanding that whether you plug this or this in, and square it, you're going to get that same answer of 4. So y partner for this 2 is also 4, just like it was here. Okay, so now we're going to try and get the points not on the parent graph. We just did that, but the points on the transformed graph. So we're going to transform each of the points. The plan has already been discussed up here that we're going to be adding 3 on our x's, which is where this kind of notation came, just a summary of what we're going to do. We are also going to be taking our y values as discussed up here. We're going to be adding 5 on those y coordinates, which is what you see here, just a summary of what we're going to do. Okay, so carrying out the transformed points, let's go ahead and get those. Why don't we transform all of our x's, then we'll transform all of our y's, just so we don't mix up what we're doing. Okay, so on the x's, we said we're going to add 3. We presently have 3x values, so when you're negative 2 plus 3, as we come from here to here, we're adding 3, so that would be 1. When you take this and add 3, 0 plus 3 is 3. And when we take 2 and add 3, we get a 5. So we've done all our transformations on our x. Now we're going to do our transformations on our y, where we're taking the y coordinate and adding 5. So 4 plus 5, going like that, we're adding that 5. And then 0 plus 5 would be 5. And then 4 plus 5 would be 9. So these are our brand new points where um, we have done both the horizontal shift as well as the vertical shift. And now we're going to plot both graphs on the same um, grid, on the same Cartesian plane. So the first uh, batch of points was negative 2, 4. Right there. Also 0, 0. Also 2, 4. And connect them in a shape that goes with parabolic functions. So there we go. We have f of x. Then we're going to do our brand new points where we had done a horizontal as well as a vertical shift. Those points were 1, 9. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We have one point right there. Then we also had 5, 9. I'll do that 3, 5 also. So 5, 9 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and all the way up to... And then that 3, 5 is going to be 1, 2, 3, and then up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if you connect these three points, then you have the G function. And the G function is the one that has a um, horizontal shift of positive 3 after we had switched the sign and a vertical shift of positive 5. So this new graph moved 3 units, and you can see this. It's moved 3 units to the right, if you want to verbally describe it. That's what this means. Up 5 units higher than the parent graph. And sometimes they'll ask you, to describe what's happening to the new graph, what has happened to the new graph with respect to the original graph. They'll ask you to describe it verbally, and sometimes they'll just ask you to um, describe it numerically, and whether it's a horizontal or a vertical shift. Okay, next we're going to talk about reflections. Reflection is another word for meaning you have flipped over a particular axis. So whenever you are flipping over the x-axis, 
um, you're going to find that the negative is out in front of the function. So it'll be a multiplier, a, a negative multiplier, a coefficient out in front of the function as opposed to what is inside with the x values. So since the negative multiplier, there's some, you know, verbiage right here is on the outside of the parentheses, not inside where the x is. Uh, multiplication by negative 1 is performed on the y coordinates. Because let's think about what this says. f of x is the same thing as y. And there, you're being told to multiply that by negative 1. So they're really commanding you here to take your y coordinates and multiply by negative 1. Okay, if the x was inside here then we would be multiplying the x-coordinates by negative 1. So here is an example where we can, you know, just kind of show what's going on. Um, they're giving you this original function, the cubic shape. So look back at your shapes on the previous page if you don't already know it. And um, we're going to take that cubic shape. We're going to get some points on the parent graph, which have already been selected for you. Again, you will get to the point where you'll do them yourself. Start by finding three key points on the parent graph, such as where do these numbers come from? The x's were just simply chosen. I chose negative 1, 0, and 1. And then I plugged those x values one at a time into this parent graph. Like if you plug in negative 1 here, it will be negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. That is where that y partner came from. If you put a 0 in there, 0 times 0 times 0 is zero because when you cube something you're multiplying it by itself three times um, okay and then if you put a one in there if you put a one in there it's one times one times one which is where that y partner came from so I chose whatever I wanted for x's I like to keep it small I like to choose a negative its positive counterpart and then um, a zero something that's in between those two x values is nice and I put I'm gonna plot all of those to get the parent graph then when I try to do this, which they're trying to instruct you in or to do a reflection over the x-axis. So this graph should flip over the x-axis. That's just another way of, say, of seeing, of um, saying reflection about the x-axis. We'll have to go back and answer this question. I don't believe I did. So let's just finish with this problem, performing the suggested transformation on these points. Let's plot both graphs on the same set of axes. So let's take these points and do as we were told. Okay, again, when you're being told to do this, you're being told to take the y's and multiply it um, by negative 1. So if I do that, multiplying this by negative 1. All it does is switch the signs when you're multiplying by negative 1. 0 doesn't have a sign. This will switch to negative 1. We have not been told to do anything for x, so the x's are going to stay the same. Negative 1, 0, and negative and positive 1. Okay, x is staying the same while the y's have been multiplied by only do what you're told, no more than that. Okay, so now we're going to plot both of these on the same set of axes. Okay, so we can do the original points, which were um, negative 1, negative 1. Then there was also the point 0, 0. Then there was also the point 1, 1. And if you understand that in this particular problem, you're supposed to be using a shape like this because you're doing the cubic shape. This all came from a parent graph that had a cube on it, and that graph always has this shape. So connecting these points, see, if you don't know the shape, you're very apt to come in here. You're, you might be very inclined to come in here and just use a straight line. That would mean that you have not studied the shapes. So make sure that you know the shapes. You should be connecting this going up, and this will curve down in the opposite direction. So that's the parent graph. 
Then the transformed points turned out to be negative 1, 1. The next point turned out to be 0, 0. And the third point turned out to be 1, negative 1. And we're going to connect those in the same fashion, but it is going to axis. So this is going to be negative 1, 1. All right, so negative 1, 1. That's one of the points. Now this next one right here is 0, 0. So we have that already. And then 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1. So making this go up while this one goes down. So that is a graph that has flipped over. If you were to take this end and bring it down, rotate it across the x-axis, it would look like this. So this is our original function, while this is our rotated function, flipped over the x-axis, and that's called a reflection. Okay, going on to this next um, concept, this time we're going to reflect it across the y-axis, flip it over the y-axis. You can say flip or rotate. And you'll see a flipping across the y-axis when the negative is inside here with the x. You're going to take all the x's and multiply them. Switch their sign. You're going to multiply them by negative 1. That's what it means to have a negative in front. You can either say multiply by negative 1 or just switch the sign. And that's going to cause your graph to flip across the y-axis. They just use the wording about the y-axis. So notice the negative multiplier is now inside the parentheses with the x, which means that you're going to perform the transformation on the x-coordinates, not the y's, for the parent graph. This action will flip it across the y-axis. So let's say that you have square root of x, and you've been instructed to take the x's and multiply by negative 1. So then what's going to happen is that your uh, function is now going to look like this. Now in this case, you know that we don't want to go into the imaginary numbers. So if they've told you to do this, the x equal to 0 in order for the radicand to remain, in order for this to remain non-negative. We don't want it to go negative. So if we're going to switch the sign like this, the x values that we choose to plug in here themselves are going to have to be 0 negative. That way we won't get into any imaginary numbers. So notice that I chose a 0. Um, I also chose, um, but these were on the original graph where they didn't have the negative. So let's see, I chose a 0 on the original graph, so we're not running into that issue yet. We have the 0, we have a 1, we have a 4 that I've chosen. I chose numbers that you could easily take the square root and you wouldn't get any kind of a decimal. Okay, so we have 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2. And the transformed points, we're going to be taking the x's and we're going to be multiplying by negative 1. So here we go with the transformed points. Okay, so taking the x and multiplying by negative 1, I'll put that right here. We're multiplying times negative 1. That's going to still make that a 0. That's going to make this a negative 1. And that's going to make this a negative 4. Okay, then we're doing nothing to the y-coordinates, so they're all going to remain the same. 0, 1, and 2. Now notice that if you actually had plugged into this function right here, how these would all work out with the values that we have already gotten in a more simplistic manner. Like for instance, if I was to put in, let's check this one right here. If I was to put in negative 1 right here, do you see how that negative 1 that I'd be plugging in would the sign would be switched by this additional negative that's here so that we would end up with a positive one, not get ourselves into imaginary number territory. We would take the square root of that positive one and get a one. If I was to put this negative four in for my x value right there, I put a negative four in for x, then there's this additional negative out front, 
that would be positive 4 square root would be 2. So instead of actually plugging into this new this newly created transformed function you're just acting on either the x's or the y's by doing really simple operations like if you're doing a vertical shift um, you're going to be adding or subtracting to the y coordinate just addition or subtraction if you're doing a horizontal shift you're going to be adding or subtracting to the x coordinate if you're doing a reflection you're going to simply be multiplying the points that you already have on the parent graph by negative one. You're just going to be switching the signs um, for a when you're flipping it over the um, when you're flipping it over the x-axis. You're just going to be multiplying the y-coordinates by negative one. Here we're just multiplying the x-coordinates by negative one. So it's much easier to do it this way than to go into the new transformed function and actually plug values into that. That becomes more complicated. Now if you're going to put all of these on the same graph, don't forget there is a specific shape for square root of x. That shape is like this for the parent graph. And then of course something else is going to look a little different when you go to plot um, the new points. The shape won't be different, but it will have flipped over one of the axes, and I want you to see that. So the original points are 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2. Okay, giving us that shape that we have. And then when we go to plot these new points on the transformed graph, we're going to again have 0, 0. This time we're going to have negative 1, 1, and we're also going to have negative 4, 2. Negative 4, which was negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and we're going to be up at 2. Keep that same shape, connecting and then hooking over, looking like a sideways parabola. Notice that what just happened here, oops, I guess I wasn't showing you that. What I did was plot these points. That was where this graph came from remembering that the shape for square root of uh, x is this shape, so this was the parent graph. Then I went and plotted these points, so this was from the original graph. This is from the transformed graph. Well, they actually just called it f of negative x. They didn't give it the name g of x because they can do it either way. And so I got these new points, and notice how just as it was supposed to happen, it flipped right over the y-axis. This graph flipped, rotated across the y-axis because I took all the x-coordinates and multiplied them by negative 1. Okay, so we now have looked at a reflection across the x-axis achieved by multiplying the y-coordinates by negative 1. And then we finished up here by looking at a rotation across the y-axis, which is achieved by multiplying the x's by negative 1.